Here I am, safely back in Davon's watch to deliver um, the wooden goods. Yeah. I'm assuming it's the same place as the clothing. Yes, I made it safely back from um, Moonhold and Deshaun. Oh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we over here? Crate contains ample space for deliveries and a sheaf of manifest papers. Place the goods within the crate. Oh, 2.92. The um, 135 gold would have cost me to buy the the gemstones to make the wooden item, the items, the style stones. Complete quest. And Shuldum has set aside a case of woodworker supplies as a reward, along with a note of thanks. Just exquisite craftsmanship. Your work, woodwork was all the rage in our most distant markets. Markets. So what's actually in there? Woodworker's case one. So many goods shipped to Cyrodiil. To end the fighting or draw it out. Ah. <sighs> no matter. Use. What happens? Use it. Ah. Ah. One eight cell. Any repair kit? Is any items of of any level that is less effective than items over level nine? Decoys. Okay. Nice. Take. Mm-hmm. What else did I get? It's useless for now. I don't know, I couldn't find it. I was in Bleak Rock Island, this treasure map. Oh. Materials. Humable. Yes, let me learn this recipe. Use. Peace health. Low, I think. Racial mot um, motifs, the Britons. I'll learn that too. I haven't done any of that. Ooh. Learn the Breton crafting style. How many pages is this? Yes, have a read. Racial motifs, five, the Britons. Being notes by Dr. Alfeda Lupus for a series of pamphlets on the major cultural styles of Tamriel. Dr. Lupus was imperial ethnographer for the potentate Davirian Korak from the second era 418 to 431. Arch Magistrate at the University, Lady Alpel Duntony, is a Breton, so I consulted with her on Breton motives. She was friendly and very helpful. The Bretons were the last major group of humans on Tamriel to free themselves from the Alvin overlords. And in many ways, their long vassalage to the Derini defines their culture. They are fiercely autonomous. Each kingdom in High Rock is jealous of its individual sovereignty. The Breton society retains a feudal structure that harkens back to the rank obsessed Derini Edgemoni. Bretons are nearly as factious as their cousins the Nords, but their long tutelage under the Alps makes them open to the magical arts rather than suspicious of them. How is this reflected in the arts and crafts? Well, look at Breton armour, for example. The gleaming heavy armour of a Breton knight is as tough and practical as that of a Nord housecarl. But its pleasing form exhibits a subtle sophistication that is reminiscent of elven elegance. 
One sees the same influence in Breton weaponry, which is beautiful yet undeniably deadly. I'm going to have to check some of this stuff out. It made me think of the differences between the Vignaf's Elven Urban Urbanity and Moran's breadth of knowledge and all to human inconsistencies, even peevishness. Apparently the traps transliminal experiments have not been going well. When I stopped by the townhouse last night, never Mori and nor Devanyev were in. If Ying Moran's apprentice told me they'd crawled quarreled over the appropriate prices to pay a transporting entity to ensure safe return from a jaunt to a Bolivian. The remarks became personal, and then my name was apparently brought up. He was shouting. They both huffed their way out of the laboratory and marched off down Divine Street in opposite directions. This is terrible. Fighting over me. I must confess, I was so disturbed I blurted out the whole thing to Lady Opal, who was incredibly kind and solicitous. She asked me if I had feelings for either of the two wizards, and I admitted I did. But they were conflicting and confusing. Opal opened a bottle or two of Bangkorai Spice Biome, and we got quite confidential with each other as the evening waned. I'm not sure how I got home. Today my head hurts, but it was worth it. As my heart is no longer so heavy. Had a bit to drink, did she? Okay. Did I miss that fox last time? Is a fox? Fox? Yes. That one's floating! I'm guessing the table it should, or the crate it's sitting on didn't load up properly. I know what I can do. Check the mail. Nope, it's not mail. That one is. Where are we up to? The Valenka stone here, those stories. Ah. There we go. So there I was, in the clearing, facing down the... Morella, the cruel and her gang of thugs. I want to tell you how I said something witty, especially evil girls and rescue Plucky. What actually happened was a lot more clear of, and it all started when I tossed the pouch with the remaining mead soaked fruit balls to Morella. Ah. Morella, the cruel, and caught the pouch of mead soaked fruit milk balls. The look on her face told me it was reflex and not desire for one of the luscious treats that drove her dexterity. As the ground began to shake and Morella's eyes went wide with panic, I quickly grabbed Plucky's leash and ran from the clearing. That's when the mammoth arrived. Getting a mammoth to follow you isn't as hard as you might imagine, since they share a particular fondness for meat-soaked fruit balls with the Nords. I'm surprised more of us don't have a line the giant beast taken along behind us. Of course, a hungry mammoth was the last thing Morale the Cruel expected to charge into clearing that day. Ooh, four, eh? Quartz, sturdy. Just like powered. A random uh, Nord style. And of course, high iron ore. Black and I watched from the tree line as the mammoth trampled through the clearing, trying to get to the meat-soaked fruit balls I tossed to Morella the Cruel. We stayed just long enough to make sure Morella and her gang were fully engaged, then we ran as fast as we could. I guess both Bethenzel will have to wait until things calm down. But another town, another tavern. A letter caught up with me when I arrived from my brother, Olgar. He would never put two sentences together, so the meaning of the missive wasn't particularly clear, but I got the intent. He wants me to come home to attend some sort of celebration. No worry, that won't affect the shipment of your components. Good. Oh. Oh well. What a pain in the ass. I just want to find a fast way to travel back home, but I run into obstacles at every turn. Did you ever try to get a portal from those stuffed ropes in the Major's Guild? They charge a small fortune if you aren't one of their milk-drinking band of book readers. I guess I'll just have to keep looking. Um, what about waste shrines? 
I am all dwarven oil. Ooh, find a superior. Crane salvage. Superior. Epic. Nice. And of course, a high iron ore. A Khajiit trader, such wonders I've seen since accepting your contract. And he's even willing to allow me to travel with his caravan all the way back home. If all goes well, I should arrive in time to attend the celebration, even though I couldn't tell from all cast later what was celebrating. Hmm, mystery. Diamond impenetrable. Mm. Yodis, the Khajiit trader, tells such wonderful stories. I never know how much to believe, but they're always amusing and seem so sincere. He also appears quite fond of plucky, and the two definitely enjoy each other's company. But also made a number of connections that should keep you stocked with components for some time to come. You're welcome, and you are welcome too, Valenka Stone Eva. Eva. Thank you very much. And, um. Yeah! That'll be it for this one. There are a few things around here I think I can see. Oh, I know what I can do. I can do. Where's that go? Yeah. I can just out the other entrance. Out of the way. Yeah! I can do the other crafting certifications. The, um. What was it? Alchemy and the um... I won't do any more, more blacksmith one. Hey, that's um... Need some more steel, which is just risky to deliver if I've got to bring it back to dust yet. But I might do a few more of these, off camera. So that'll be it for tonight. Bye!